Guys, this is episode 83 of Bible Time, and I want to wish you guys a happy Independence Day and celebrating the 4th of July, whatever you guys might be doing. Um, Today we get to celebrate an even greater independence, and we get to see a glimpse into a greater freedom that we enjoy in this this great country of ours, and that is uh, revealed in the suffering of the king in Psalm 22. So last week we talked about how this this whole idea of the king in the Psalms that we've been seeing is that we see this great victory of the king and his relationship to God is perfect. And when we think about Psalm 1 being the Psalm that's about the word of God and the man of God that follows the word, right? And then Psalm 2 being about the son, the Messiah, the king, that all the nations need to submit to this king because this king is the perfect one who, who blends together obedience with God in perfect leadership And this king, we've seen him exalted and fighting his enemies and defeating his enemies with ease in Psalm 18. And in Psalm 20, we have the people's prayer for the king. And Psalm 21 is this clear answer that the king is blessed and that the king is going to live forever and he's going to have a great reign. And then we come to Psalm 22 22, and it's it's almost almost as though though we've hit a bump bump in the the road, something something that that seems to not meld with what what we expect. expect. So, So, read read through through Psalm Psalm 22 22 and and continue continue along with me. me. So, So we have have this for the the choir choir director, director, upon, and and this 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 Hebrew Hebrew phrase here, Ijelet HaShahar, which which probably probably should should be translated, translated, it might be translated in your Bible, and it's it's the the doe of the dawn, or the the hide of the morning, something like that. And, and, you know, it's, it's possible, possible that this is referring to a specific, uh, maybe, maybe musical score that this psalm would go to. to. But, but it's, it's also possible, possible that what this is describing is that you have, have a, a doe, which is, is generally in the Bible, this, this idea of innocence, right? This idea of, of an innocent animal. And with all these animals that are brought up in the psalm, you haven't just read it. You see that lions are mentioned and the bulls of Bashan and the dogs and all these things. It is, it is possible, possible that, that what this, this is referring to is to set you up to, to kind of expect this psalm of the afflicted, this psalm of the, afflicted, this this psalm of the sufferer, and his innocence and stuff like that. that. So, so that's very possibly what this is getting, getting at. at. But, but we have, we have uh, a choir, for, the for the choir director, director a psalm of David. David. And so again, so again David, David is writing with this understanding that he is expecting a king to come from his line that's going to solve all the problems. Right? right, and, and coming, coming from, from these great, great exalted psalms, psalms about this Messiah, Messiah this King who's done it all, we come, we come to these words that are so familiar to us, my God, my God, God why have you forsaken me? me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning, meaning when I groan and when I cry out, deliverance is far away. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by and night, but I have no rest. This continual rolling a day and night that God is not answering him, that his, his words are not being heard. But he comes to this, yet you are holy. Right? Even though, even this, even in all of this, in this, this time that I feel like you are far away from me, his words as strong as forsaken me. Right? That there's no deliverance for me, that I am crying, but you don't answer, and I have no rest. Even, Even so, so you are holy. holy. Holy being this idea, idea that, that God, God, you are you are set, set apart. apart. Right? right? You're, you're not, not in the situation, situation I'm in. You're, you're not being affected by the things I'm being affected by. by. You're, you're outside, outside of it. it. And you're and enthroned, enthroned upon, upon the praises, the praises of, Israel. of Israel. Right? right? That, that God is, is being lifted, lifted up and upheld and is is overall and he is sovereign and powerful over and sustained and glorified. And he is enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Right, so, right. so even, even though the though perspective, perspective of this, of this sufferer, sufferer is, is, is that, that things, things are wrong and I need and deliverance and God's, and God's not answering, answering it, doesn't, doesn't change the fact, the fact that God is in control, control he, is he is holy, and he can, can do what he, what he pleases. pleases. Right, right. And you, and you have, have this, this in, in verse 4, in you our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were delivered, and you they trusted and were not dismayed, and you have this... This problem, problem where, you know, you know this, this, this sufferer, sufferer is crying out, he's saying that there's, that there's no deliverance for me, but you, but you delivered our fathers, our fathers and, when and when I cry out, they, they, they were heard, heard but, but I'm, I'm not. not. 
right? So, so it's, it's, there's this, this twofold, twofold um, you, can you can almost sense, sense the struggle of the, the, the one confessing that, that, Lord, you have you listened to those before, before me, right? When right? we, we struggle, struggle with our understanding of what God, God has done, done. Oftentimes, oftentimes we go back and do his word, and we go back and we see the testimony of his faithfulness to those in the church for thousands of years, and we go back to the times that he's been faithful to us. And we use those times to bolster our faith. But at the, but same, at the same time, time there's, there's this struggle in these verses, verses where he's, where he's saying, saying that there is, there is no deliverance, deliverance from me, but you delivered them. them and, uh, they, uh, they cried out to you, and they were they delivered. delivered. And, and I, I cry out to you, and I cry out day and night, but I'm not heard. I have no rest. Right? They were not disappointed. They were delivered, but I'm not. And what does he say? He says, but I am a worm, not a man. As though he is being treated as though he's not part of this people of God. Right, he says right, he, he is, is treated, treated as a reproach, as a reproach of, men of men and despised, and despised by, the by the people. And what's, and what's, what's important, important about this idea of the people is this is not the peoples, meaning the nations and different, and different people, people groups. This, this is Israel. Israel. Right, this, right, is, this God's is God's people. people. And for whatever, for whatever reason, reason, the sufferers is despised, despised by God's, God's people. people. And all and who all see him, him, right, they're, they're, without exception, exception, all who see who me sneer at me, right? right? This, this sneering is mocking, is mocking and they, this, term this term that they, they, they separate, separate with their, with their lip, lip. This, is this is that they, they make they mouths at me, right? right? They, they, they make they fun, fun of me, me. they wag they their head, head, all these ideas that they are mocking this sufferer. Right, they're right, not they're sympathizing, sympathizing with him. They're, they're not, not even, even looking, looking with, pity, with pity, as you might, as you look, might at look at someone who is down, down and out on the out streets. On the streets but, they're but they're seeing the sufferer, the sufferer and, they're and they're mocking him. him. Right, and that's, right, why, that's why, he why he says that I'm a worm and not a man. I'm treated as the lowest of the low. Right, and what are they mocking? What are they saying? They're saying, "Commit yourself to the Lord." Let him Let deliver him. him. Let him Let rescue him, him because he because delights in him. They're, him. They're mocking the fact that this, that this sufferer believes that God, that God will save him. him. Right? They're right? They're mocking the fact that this sufferer cries, cries out for deliverance. Right? That, right? that he that believes he that God will rescue him, him, him. That he delights in him. him. Right? This right? idea that this sufferer believes he has a right relationship with God. They're actually making fun of that. Yet. Yet. Right, yeah, right, yet. once again, once we, again had, we had earlier, we saw this confession that, he, that the sufferer doesn't feel heard and he feels like deliverance is far away. And he says, but you, you answer the prayers of our fathers and our forefathers, those who went before us. And then again, he says that these people are, they're mocking me and I'm a worm and not a man. And again, he goes back to, you're faithful to them. And yet, and yet you are you are, you are he who brought me forth from the womb. womb. You made me trust one upon my mother's breast. Upon, upon you, you I was cast, I was cast from, birth. from birth. You've been, You've been my God from my mother's, from my mother's womb. womb. Right, so, right, he's, so saying, he's saying, in the past, in the past with our with fathers, our you, were you were faithful. In the past, in the past with me, you were faithful. From the day, from the day I was born, I was born till now, till now you've, sustained you've sustained me. You have been my God. I have reason to believe. I have reason to trust. Verse 11, Verse 11, be not be far, not from, far me, from me, for trouble, for trouble is, near, is near, and there is none to help this, or none to help this idea that he is hopeless and alone, alone that there is that no there one on his, on his side. side. And he's, and he's requesting the Lord, do not be do not far from me. Where, if, the if the presence, presence of God, God is on your side and he is near, there's near, nothing that can trouble you. you. But he's saying but he's that trouble is near, and there's no one to help. But I am surrounded. Right, many, right, many bulls, bulls have, surrounded have surrounded me, strong, strong bulls of Bashan, Bashan being a, being a, a place, a place uh, that is uh, that is northeast, northeast of, Galilee, of Galilee, and it's this and it's place this where there tends to be a lot of wild, wild bulls, bulls, not domesticated, not domesticated and, it's and it's the best, the best land, land, so they're the, so they're heaviest, the heaviest, heaviest, and they're strong. And they're strong. Right, he's saying, right, he's, saying he's, he's, you know, describing these enemies surrounding him like they're bulls, and they've encircled him. Right, and then right, another, and then metaphor, another metaphor, metaphor, they, they open, open wide, wide their mouths, mouths at me and, and as a ravening and roaring lion. lion. Right, so, right, these, so these, he's saying, I'm, he's saying, all, I'm alone. all alone, there's no one on my side, but I am completely, completely surrounded, surrounded by, enemies by enemies that are like bulls, that are like, that are like lions, lions, and I am and poured, poured out like out water. water. Right, this is where, this is where, you know, this suffering is different than what we've seen in the Psalms. Right, a lot, right, of, a lot times of times David's, David's appeal, appeal to the Lord, to the Lord is, that is that he is afraid, he is afraid and, he is and he is fearful of the enemy getting the upper hand. hand. He is fearful, fearful that his foot, that his might, foot slip. might slip. And this is and where this it becomes, becomes abundantly, abundantly clear, clear that this that isn't this just isn't fear of suffering. suffering. This isn't this just isn't fear, just fear of, of pain. pain. This is this in the moment. Right, he's saying that he's poured out like water. All of my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. 
right? These, right? These, this idea of bones, bones being out of being joint, out of joint and, and separated, and separated. It's, it's, it's so it's clear so an image in, image in our mind today of, of, of crucifixion, crucifixion that, Jesus that Jesus was hung by his hung hands, by and, hands feet, and feet and his, and his, his body is being stretched and pulled apart by the weight of his own his own legs and his torso pulling down on him. But you got to understand that this is at a time, this was written before crucifixion was even historically known to have existed. And so this and so image, this of, image suffering of suffering becomes, becomes all the more all clear, the more clear when, we when we see Christ, see Christ and, his, and suffering. his suffering. He says, my heart, says, my heart is, like, is wax, like wax, right? Like right? fire like that fire melts that wax away. away. His, heart his heart seems to be seems failing, to be failing him. him. And it's melted, it's melted within, within him. him. My, strength my strength is dried, is dried up, up like a pot shirt. If strength was some, was some kind of... Kind of some kind some of, kind uh, of liquid or something like that. It's, like that. it's, it's as though it's his strength is dried, dried up like a up pot shirt. And I have a pot shirt is a, a piece of pottery, a worthless, worthless kind of broken, kind of broken, piece, of broken piece of pottery that you're not going to use, use anymore. anymore. You can see, you can see at, one at one point this would have been a handle going up right here. here. But this but is this about, is as, about dry as dry as it, as it gets. You know, even as, you know, I'm, even holding as I'm holding it, I'm getting dust on my fingers. And he's saying that, he's, saying that his, strength his strength is as dry as a pot shirt. shirt. His, strength his strength is gone. Is my, gone. Tongue my tongue cleaves to my jaws. To my jaws. Right, that his right, that mouth his has, mouth no, has spit, no spit. That his tongue that his is, tongue is cleaving, cleaving to the inside of his mouth. And he's saying to the Lord that you lay me in the dust of death. And so in all this suffering, this one who is suffering dies. That the Lord has laid him in the dust of death. You can't confuse what this what this term means, right? We know that man is from the dust, and part of the curse of the fall was that to the dust we will return. And so the sufferer dies, and the the suffering doesn't end. He says that dogs have surrounded me, right? Now the enemy they were they were bulls, they were lions. Now they're dogs, right? Dogs that are there to get the scraps. Right, these dogs are parallel with the idea of this band of evil doers. He is surrounded, he is encompassed, and they have pierced my hands and feet. You know, to us this is a very this feels like a very clear reference. Like this has got to be, you know, talking about the cross, and I believe that it is, but this this idea, this pierce my hands and feet, it's probably not best understood with this term. Um the, the really what it says is that it's the word like a lion, my hands and feet. And so it has this idea as though a lion is biting down on your hands and feet, right? And that, you know, that idea of piercing is there, but it's probably important to understand that it's not that exact phrase because there are times where, you know, Jewish rabbis will come out and be like, you see, Christians try to make this about, you know, they try to make it about the cross and they try to make it about Jesus, but it's not. And the reality is it is absolutely about Jesus and it can only be about Jesus. And we'll see that very soon here. And we've already seen glimpses of that. But this idea of like a lion, my hands and feet, this idea that these li the lion is biting down on my hands and my feet, your feet being the thing that could give you hope that maybe you could flee, but you can't because that's being bitten down. Your hands, the thing that may give you hope that you can fight, but he can't because that is being bitten down on by a lion. I can count all my bones. They look, they stare at me, right? The idea that from the perspective of his suffering, he can count his bones um, you know, we might think of that as someone who has lost so much weight that they can see all their bones, but it's, it is probably more connected to this next phrase where it says that they divide my garments among me or among them and for my clothing, they cast lots, right? This verse right here is quoted in every single gospel. And it's the, it's when, you know, the centurions are dividing up his garments, and so this idea that I can count all my bones is as though he has been shamed. He has been stripped down on the cross. Crucifixion is not just a painful death, but is a shameful one, right? And this whole time he is being shamed. They look, they stare at me while he has no clothes and he is being, being mercilessly tortured on the cross. But you, O Lord, right? But you, O Lord, be not far off. Right? The hope of this, this sufferer is that the presence of God will sustain him. O oh, you, my help, hasten to my assistance. Right now, you know, it, it kind of becomes confusing. We're like, we know that this, this suffering has led to death. What, how is he still able to appeal to the Lord? How is he able to ask for help? Right? Deliver my soul from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of the wild oxen. You answer me. 
right? So we have this, you know, this repeat of all the ways that the enemy has been described as a dog, as a lion, as an oxen to be saved. And he's asking for salvation from that. And he says, at the end, you answer me, right? So this fear from the beginning of my God, my God, why have you forsaken me when I cry by day and by night and I'm not heard and I have no rest? He's saying that you answer me. You still answer my prayer, right? And somehow after death, after all this suffering, he can make this confession that he's going to, he's going to, I will tell your name to my brethren, right? I thought you were a worm. I thought you were kicked out and ostracized by the people. But now he's in the midst of the assembly and he can call the followers of God brethren. And he, not only is he going to have a role there, but he's going to be the one telling the brethren. He's going to be the one leading the worship. He says, he says I'm going to praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him, right? He's calling out to, the, to other people that if you love the Lord, if you fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him, right? So now he is back in the community of Israel. He is back in the people of God, and he's actually leading the charge for God, right? He's calling them to praise and to worship, to glorify, to stand in awe of him. All you descendants of Israel, why? Because... When the thing that seemed like it was the worst possible thing to happen, when the, when the disciples thought that they had the Messiah in their midst and that he was being crucified and they thought it was all over, they did not trust or believe or understand that he needed to raise. You know, when all of this happened and he rose from the dead, that is the greatest reason that God has ever displayed to praise him and to glorify him and to stand in awe when he defeated death, when his son conquered death, right? So why do we praise him? Because he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, right? God has not written off the affliction of the afflicted and not just in general that he sustains the afflicted who cry out to him, but Jesus, this sufferer, as the ultimate example that God hears the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him, right? His face being the, the privilege and the honor and being in his presence. But when he cried for him for help, he heard, right? He heard all this fear that you feel far away, Lord, and, and I, I feel as though I'm not heard and my suffering's not ending in all of it. When he cried out for help, he heard. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. So now this resurrected king who has been redeemed and saved by God and redeemed in the eyes of the people and the people know who he is, they're praising him, right? This king confessed to God. He says, from you, God, comes my praise in the great assembly, right? These people who I was once a worm that was mocked. I was once, you know, the lowest of the low. It says that they, these people are now praising me. And I shall pay my vows before those who fear him. I'm going to keep all my words before the people of God. And as Christians, when we think about what are the words that Jesus has left us with, it's a lot, right? We have a lot of promises that we expect Jesus to fulfill. And we have a lot of promises that we expect him to sustain in our Christian life. And he says that he's going to pay all those vows before those who fear him. The afflicted will eat and be satisfied Right? So those who suffer like him, that's why Paul says that he joins in Christ's suffering and he calls us to join in the suffering because when we suffer like him, we will eat and be satisfied. Right? We eat of eternal bread and we drink of eternal water and we're baptized in him and we are saved in him and we will be satisfied. And those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever, the heart that once melted. Right Now this is the proclamation of the people, the heart that once melted Inside that in this suffering, it says that let your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All of the families of the nations will worship before you. This is the fulfillment of the promise that is made to Abraham in Genesis 12, that in Abraham, all the nations of the world, all the families of the earth will be blessed. We learn that this can only come about by the suffering and the resurrection of this suffering king. All the ends of the earth, not just Israel, will remember and will turn to the Lord. This has been the curse of Israel since its inception is that they don't remember what God has done. 
God again and again cries out and begs of them to remember the things that the Lord has done and have faith and believe. And there will come a time when the whole earth will remember. All the families of the nations will worship before the Lord. For the kingdom is Yahweh's and he rules over the nations. And this, so this idea of the kingdom and the nations are parallel, being that the kingdom won't just be Israel. The kingdom will be the whole world, all of creation. God will have dominion over it because of the, the suffering and resurrection of this king. All the prosperous of the earth, all the prosperous of the earth will eat and worship, and all those who go down to the dust will bow before him, even he who cannot keep his soul alive. He who cannot keep his soul alive. You have this from the, those on the earth who are rich and healthy and well to those who are suffering and barely on the point of, you know, about to die, everyone in between will worship, will eat and worship before God. Posterity, this word being, you know, the descendants of the king will serve him, right? We know that Jesus doesn't have physical descendants, but all of those who are called children of him, all those who are part of his family brought into the fold of God will serve him. It will be told of the Lord to the coming generations. Now recognize that this word Lord is not the same as the all caps word that we understand to be the personal name of Yahweh, right? What's going to be told to the coming generation? It is going to be what Adonai, what the Lord has done, what Jesus has done. They will come and will declare his righteousness, right? They'll see that this one who lived a perfect life died and suffered and rose again. This is going to be the story to the coming generations, to a people who will be born, right? So it's not going to be just the people that were alive then who are going to be worshiping and are going to be proclaiming what he's done. But this is us. We are the people who will be born, right? And there will people. There are people who will be born even after that, and we still proclaim what Jesus did on the cross and that he has performed it. Right, this, this whole image of the suffering and the subsequent glory of the king is why Jesus can ask his disciples, he can say, well, was it not necessary that the Messiah would suffer before he was glorified? Right, why are you shocked that the Messiah had to suffer? And there's a point in John where Jesus says, you know, I thirst. And, you know, the, the way it's written is that, you know, to fulfill the scriptures, Jesus says, I thirst and they, they give him sour wine with a branch of hyssop, and he says, it is finished. It is finished. You know, and, and, uh, and many people think that's even in reference to this psalm, as Jesus quoted this psalm on the cross, saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I think too oftentimes we look at that as though Jesus was just saying those words, as opposed to the idea that Jesus was actually reminding us of this psalm, that when we look upon his suffering, to remember that the suffering was necessary for his glorification. The suffering was necessary to give us hope. Before he suffered, the world treated him like a worm and not a man. Right Before he suffered and it was glorified, we had no hope. But we can look and we can proclaim his righteousness and we can proclaim to a people that, have, that has not been bored that he has performed it, that he has done it, that it is finished. So when Jesus says on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And his last words are, it is finished. Clearly on his mind was the suffering necessary on our behalf, right? And what a glorious thing to see because when we come to this psalm, it's, it feels so out of place in the flow of exalting the king. But to see that this psalm fills in the blanks. We understand there's these glimpses in the Bible where the, the Messiah seems to suffer, but then all, all these other places seem to describe him as victorious without exception. And to see that even the suffering becomes the absolute and ultimate example of his victory is such a, a glorious thing that only God could have done. So that is Psalm 22. I encourage you guys to read through it. I encourage you to do some, to, some research on your own. Find those gospel quotations where they're quoting it. Read those parallel gospel accounts and just have that, that suffering in your mind, understanding that Jesus had this psalm in his heart and in his mind, even on the cross.